Before the meeting with President Putin, you called him an adversary, a rival, and yet you expressed hope that you will be able to bring this relationship to a new level. Did you manage to do this? No, actually, I called him a competitor, and a good competitor he is. Uh, and I think the word competitor is a uh, compliment. Their countries have been wary foes for decades, facing off over ideology and global influence. But today, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin showed just how closely their interests are aligned. When the two leaders spoke to the world after their closed-door meeting, a lot of people were shocked that Trump blatantly took Putin's side on the subject of Russian meddling in the U.S. election and dismissed the findings of his own intelligence agencies. And this raises some unprecedented questions. We're going to try to get some answers now. Riva Goujon is vice president of Global Analysis with Stratfor, which advises clients on geopolitics. She's in Austin, Texas. And Philip Bump is a national correspondent with The Washington Post, and he's focused on decoding Trump's behavior before and after this historic meeting. He joins us from New York. Reva, let's begin with you. Were you surprised at what you heard in that news conference? Surprised? No. Um, I, you know, I think we've had a number of different case studies on Trump now, and going into this meeting, Putin, of course, prepared very well for it. And I think he thought long and hard about what is going to be the best topic of discussion to really get the American president comfortable with him so that he can steer the negotiation. And of course, that topic very much centered on Trump's election victory and the sort of, you know, commiserating over the criticisms coming from the press, from their political opponents, and demonstrating this very ardent political defense of the American president, you know, even going so far as to propose different, you know, ideas on joint working groups, on, on the cyber issues, and ideas that Trump actually seemed very receptive to. Of course, we know those are loaded with contradictions, uh, but it, it did play play very well to the American president. And I think you saw that comfort really come across in the press conference today. So, Philip, maybe Riva wasn't surprised. I know a lot of other people were in the newsroom. We were looking at some of those moments in the news conference and, you know, kind of shaking our head. Uh, you, as I said in the intro, have been decoding Trump's approach to this summit. Uh, what did you think as you saw him speaking today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's certainly the case that one, looking at it from a distance, one shouldn't be surprised. Of course, Donald Trump is going to say that he disagrees with the Mueller investigation. Of course, he uh, agrees with Putin that he he he, he uh, has some plausible deniability about Russia's role in the interference in the 2016 election, because that's what Trump does. That said, though, it still is stunning that the president of the United States would stand alongside a longtime foe. I mean, he... Russia is, in some sense, I suppose, a competitor, but is very much a geopolitical foe of the United States to stand alongside the president of Russia and make these assertions to undercut his own intelligence agencies to not only that, but go against decades of American precedent in not criticizing political opponents overseas and disparaging the Democrats, disparaging the investigation being conducted on behalf of his own Department of Justice was astonishing. It was a, a, a remarkable. Uh, it was it was as though you had a kid who always behaved badly and then you took him into the middle of the the opera and he got up on stage and started doing the same thing. Yes, of course, you, that's what he does, but you don't expect him to do it there. And when he does it there, the ramifications are enormous. Let's listen to another excerpt from the news conference. Just now, President Putin denied having anything to do with the election interference in 2016. Every U.S. intelligence agency has concluded that Russia did. What, who, my first question for you, sir, is who do you believe? Do I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but, uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. And what he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. Okay? So, Riva, you, part of your job is to analyze geopolitics and shifting relationships internationally. I'm sure a lot of governments around the world were watching today and, and trying to do their own analysis. What would you tell them about the state of the relationship between at least Trump and Putin, but maybe the United States and Russia? 
Well, I think on the personality level, there's still a lot of cause for concern for a number of U.S. allies. Clearly, you saw the ease in which Trump was standing alongside Putin. And again, you know, when and just as you heard in that clip, just how receptive Trump was to Putin's proposals, which we know are incredibly complicated when we talk about just the notion of cyber interference in the United States. Um, you know, but still, the geopolit geopolitical competition between the United States and Russia is very much entrenched. And I think Trump going into this meeting thought that he actually came in with some cards, you know, that he came off the heels of the NATO summit, arguing for strong defense spending, hammering his NATO partners in the process. To him, that was a show of strength to Russia to say, look, I'm willing to do this to build a strong defense on your on the European doorstep of Russia. Um, of course, you know, when we step back and we look at it, this is the president openly quarreling with his his European allies, and that feeds right into a Russian strategy of keeping the West divided. So there are different interpretations of this. But when we look at substance versus optics, there are some real you know, substantive issues that are developing between the U.S. and Russia, where the United States is providing an effective check on Russia. You see that through the continued military buildups, through the institutional bonds between the United States and its NATO partners. There's a very interesting discussion taking place right now between the United States and Poland, for example, on a permanent base there. That is surely going to get Russian attention. And of course, we can't forget that strong congressional check that we have on any attempt by the president to ease sanctions on Russia unilaterally. But when he was given an opportunity here to assess on the one hand what his own intelligence agencies are saying about Russia's meddling in the U.S. election and uh, supporting Putin, he seemed to choose Putin. Did that concern you? Well, you know, this is not the first time all, as well that the American president has seemingly undermined his own intelligence agencies. We've seen attacks on the FBI. We even saw attacks on, on the CE and on the CIA very early in his presidency. And it's because he sees this investigation, these probes, these intelligence reports as personal attacks on him, on his election victory. So honestly, that's, that's just a consistency. I, the manifestation of it, of course, is shocking when you see it. You you know, standing when he's standing next to a, a very ruthless world leader like Putin, but still, it's it's consistent behavior from this president. And uh, Philip, do these words matter? Does the, what happened in that news conference matter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, categorically. I mean, they're, they're, we're seeing an increased divide between President Trump, Trump as an individual and the actions of the United States government, which was just referred to. But we're seeing our allies overseas make that distinction as well. There's a report today from ABC News that they spoke with European leaders who said, we look at Donald Trump as separate from the United States itself. And the United States has done a lot of things to try and keep Russia contained, to keep try and maintain the same geopolitical stance in regards to Russia that it has had uh, for decades and well preceding. Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is an anomaly, but his words still matter. Yes, it is the case that he has said these things before. Yes, it is the case that we should expect him to undercut the, the intelligence agencies as regards uh, what happened with the 2016 election. But there is no question that it is undermining the United States broadly by having a president of the United States who is so willing to defy what seems to be an obvious reality. When the Washington Post first reported on the hacking of the Democratic National Committee in June 2016, it was already at that time known that it was the Russians who were involved, absent any intelligence agencies, investigatory uh, re reports or results. We already knew that then. We know that now. And to have Donald Trump deny it for his own personal benefit is why our allies are having to distance Donald Trump from the United States more generally. Now, the moment that news conference ended, Philip, we immediately heard some really strong commentary from journalists, from uh, analysts, and, and I want to read you, and from politicians as well. I want to read you a couple of those. John Brennan, former CIA director, albeit under a Democratic government, said Donald Trump's press conference performance in Helsinki rises to and exceeds the threshold of high crimes and misdemeanors. It was nothing short of treasonous. And then John McCain, as we know, a former Republican candidate for president and certainly a longtime foe of Donald Trump's, though in the same party, said, among other things, no prior president has ever abased himself more abjectly before a tyrant. And so, Philip, 
I mean, these are people with good credentials, but they're also people right. who clearly are opponents of Donald Trump. When you hear that kind of rhetoric, help us in Canada understand, uh, are, are they exaggerating? I mean, obviously, they're subjective assertions, right? I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to weigh in on whether or not th they are exaggerating. But I will say, to have such statements be issued against a sitting president of the United States, particularly in John McCain's case, to a member of his own party, is astonishing. It is unique. It is not something that happens. It is without precedent. These are not allegations, assertions that are made about presidents and a, as a general rule. Certainly, it was the case that Richard Nixon did a number of things which were questionable. He clearly did things that were in violation of federal law. Uh, but even then, I think the assertion, the, 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 uh, what we're seeing said about Donald Trump now in, after what happened in Helsinki is, is, a, is something that stands apart. It is absolutely unusual, and that is a reflection of the unusual moment that Donald Trump presented on the world stage. Well, last question to, to each of you, and, and Reva, first of all, given your expertise watching geopolitics, uh, what are you looking for next? Well, first, one big thing is arms control. That factored heavily into the agenda. There were vague references to the New START Treaty, for example. We need to see details on that. Two is Syria. Putin seems to be brewing some kind of proposal around Syria and containing Iranian activity in collaboration with the Israelis. We'll need to see details on that. Three is sanctions easing. You know, we saw iconically Putin toss that ball to, to Trump, saying the ball is in your court. Ironically, the ball is really in Putin's court to try to shape the conversation around Syria, Ukraine, and any of these other issues to see if he can get some kind of sanctions easing. But again, that's where we still have very strong congressional oversight over the American president. And Philip, what are you looking for? Well, I think that all, all of those things that were just said are absolutely the case. There's a lot of details that need to be worked out. But I think it's worth pausing in this moment to remember how unique and unusual today was. Today was, for critics of President Trump, probably the worst case scenario for how that would have gone. If you had to come up with an idea of how poorly Donald Trump could have handled a relationship or an interaction with President Putin, that probably would have been it or close to it. And that's going to necessarily have political ramifications. There are going to be people who have long defended President Trump. Well, the, everyone's exaggerating and things aren't as bad. Today was as bad as people feared things could get. And that will absolutely be something that whether or not Republicans finally take a stand against Donald Trump and say enough is enough, something will necessarily happen from this that, that, that will push to the side, at least for the time being, concerns about the details around what the administration will do in regards to Putin. Well, really nice hearing from both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.